It's time for the Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1669, recorded Thursday, April 5th, 2018. Just in case. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have some gadgets from the car show, a gadget I don't know about. We find out what my theme for this month is, and your viewer videos all next on the Gizwiz! It's the same dumb show with Dickie D, and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz, because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now, and here he is, your postmaster of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? I can breathe out of my nose. It's fantastic. Wow. I know. I know. I should join a talent <laughs> But I show. see a box of Kleenex on the table. <laughs> Just so in case. It's... Yeah. So uh, <laughs> over the weekend, was got it hit harder than uh, it was even on the show. Oh um, my word! Yeah, but uh, I I got over it. the The hill kind of ended on uh, Sunday, and everything felt a lot better by Monday. I f fell by my like myself, and Thursday I still have a runny nose, a little bit of a cough, but uh, feel like normal. So good, all good. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, good, very sure. good, for sure. Just in time for. Possibly next weekend going to L.A. and get sick at a convention once again. So. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> that that doesn't affect us recording this, no, this time, right? no. this trip. Okay, yeah. very good. Um, yeah, no, New York City's been, uh, it's spring. The first day of spring, we had a snowstorm where they're expecting another snowstorm Saturday. It's just ridiculous. Uh, a windstorm yesterday that <laughs> couldn't even have lunch on the boat without getting seasick. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Man. But the car show's in town. The car show, the car the, show. The auto show. That would be something. Do you ever go to a, a car show? I've never been, but I do like cars. I have always loved cars, and I've always prided myself to be able to tell different models apart in, in different manufacturers. And so it'd be like, man, that Nissan drove by here real fast. And all my friends would be like, what, that, what, that was just a silver <laughs> car. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Um, so well, yeah, your, I do your like friend, yes. Your, your friends are like me and never owned a car in, uh, in, in my life. I think I rented a car once in my life. Uh, but I go to the car show to look for weird stuff. And, uh, and, and the New York car show is like a big deal. It's still on. It runs 10 days. They get uh, a total of a, a million plus people. And uh, so uh, I went with... Uh, uh, Larry, who who does videos for us when when Dennis is not a, a, around on on a press day, and so we go by the Honda booth and they have all these VR glasses lined up, and I go, oh, what what are those? And he says, uh, the Honda Experience. Experience <laughs> Honda, Experience. like yeah, so never I said, before. Can, can I can I do that? Yeah, and he puts them on me. And uh, he says, you know, go over there where it says start. And then Larry says, Larry Gerson says, uh, can I do one? And the guy said, no, only one person uh, can do this at a time. So I walk over there and I stand on the rug and I think I have a photo. Larry took a picture of me. So I'm standing looking away from the car and I see it starts like an ad. The 2019 <laughs> Honda has a, a, a and all these copy points go by and then it goes, go to platform two. So I walk and now I'm facing a different part of the convention center. And I'm thinking, what in the world is this? Go, Get this is into, a nightmare. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm going to see cars speeding by. It's a get into the car on the driver's side. I go, oh, this is gun. This is it. This is it. When you're driving, you'll be able to see cars in the lanes on either side of you. And it, it's like a, an animated thing. It's not even real cars. And then I get in the passenger side. I'm thinking, now there'll be something. You have Bluetooth. You'll be able to. This goes up. Uh, so I finally get out. So it was, said a, to the guy, it was an augmented reality car walkthrough, it sounds like? Yes. 
Wow. Yes, and I, and I said to the guy, how long does that take? And he said, uh, six minutes. And I said, and if one person can do it at a time and they're expecting 50 to 70,000 people opening day, <laughs> how's that going to work? And he said, uh, it's going to be chaotic. <laughs> it's going to be absolute chaos. I hate this I, part of my job. <laughs> Anyway, I, I understand when the show was open, other car companies had what I was expecting. Interesting. But I thought, I thought, boy, that was not the proper use of VR to my mind. Yeah, I, it sounds like it was a good execution, but they missed a, a little bit of other execution. When it comes yes, to exactly. like, like it, the experience, it sounds like blew you away. But it's impractical yeah. because it takes so long. You can't show people all of this. Exactly. And, and wouldn't it have been nice to be sitting in the car and and see something happening? Yeah. Anyway. For sure. That's so interesting. I wonder what type of technology that is. It reminds me a lot of HoloLens. Um, you, you know, it know. might be. It's, it's where, you know, it says follow the arrows and then these arrows light up across your eyes. Right. And you can see the reality. You're not looking at a screen. No. You right. you can see the reality, and that's why I thought it was extra strange because people would stand outside the exhibit looking at me, and you can and see thinking, them looking at yes, you. Yes, yes, looking at me, and they're thinking, "Why is he staring out at us yeah. when the car is behind him?" That's why I thought it was interesting. Very strangely executed. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, man, very interesting. Um, Cool. That's it. But anyway, it cool, uh, but yeah. It is cool. So, uh, I wonder if they'd have this like at a, sorry to interrupt again, uh, at no, a no, dealership. That might be cool. That, that might be cool. That would be good. Like if there was a couple of people waiting, you could say, you know, put these on and I'll be with you in a few minutes. But in the meantime, you can learn about the car. That would, right. that would be a, a perfect place for that kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. Anyway. Cool. So I went around and found what I thought was, you know, since I'm not like you, I, I am like you in as much as I can't identify any car. So I tried to find the most unique driving vehicle there. And outside of a garbage truck that I learned later on was it's the new hybrid uh, New York City garbage trucks that are three hundred and fifty thousand dollars each so you could buy a uh, lamborghini and, instead of this car. i'm sorry it's not a garbage truck it's a it's a uh, street sweeper ah. but i'm figuring for three hundred fifty thousand dollars, you could give everybody ten dollars a day to sweep their own stoop <laughs> uh, anyway a day yeah for sure uh, a yeah. day a day uh wow. anyway here is to my mind a unique vehicle Hey, Dickie Bartolo, Mads Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv, the 2018 New York City Car Show. So you saw the label there, Slingshot. When I was a kid, a slingshot was something different. And John here is going to tell us about this slingshot. So John, my first question is, can you go on the highway with this? Absolutely, it's 100% street legal. Uh, it is classified federally as a motorcycle, so anywhere you can take a motorcycle, you can ride this. Uh, it also classifies uh, at state level in about 44 states now as an auto cycle, meaning you don't need a driver's a motorcycle endorsement on your driver's license to drive it. You can drive it with just a standard driver's license. Looking at the uh, specs over here, was this a 160 horsepower engine? 173 horsepower. So, how fast does this go? Because it's must is it fiberglass? It's a combination of, uh, I mean, there's a little bit of everything in there, steel, plastic. Um, it's not fiber. There's not much fiberglass in it. Any carbon in there? There is some carbon. You know, it's in order to stay in that motorcycle classification, it has to weigh under 1,700 pounds or 1,750 pounds, which means you've got 173 horsepower in a vehicle that weighs 1,700 pounds. Wow. So the top speed of this would be? Plenty fast. <laughs> Over 100? Okay, over 100. Fast uh, enough all for right, anyone. So <laughs> now there are different, is this the latest model over here? Yeah. Can we walk over there? I've got to ask uh, Larry, our camera guy, to follow us around. And this, I love the fact that you have the canopies. Are they optional on all of them, or is it just available on this one? They are. Uh, this is the Grand Touring LE. We just launched this product in February, and it 
comes included with the sling shade, some upgraded seats. It's designed for the people who want to take a longer trip with it. The sling shade is available color matched for any every model that we have. As okay. And when you say make a longer trip, what do we have for storage? So the built-in storage on this is behind the seats. Okay. We may not be able to see it in uh, this light. Oh, okay. So there's room for a tiny suitcase. Yep. So is it the same on the other same side? on both sides, and we have uh, size match bags that fit in perfectly. Oh, into great. This. <laughs> great. All right, now let's talk about price. This is the most expensive one? This is. This one's right at $29,999. Okay. And it includes, like I said, it includes that sling sh shade. It includes a lot of the upgrades, the full navigation package, Bluetooth audio, uh, everything built into it right out of the box. And, John, what would the basic one be uh, price-wise? The base model is our S, and, and that's nineteen nine ninety nine. It's the hair under $20,000. Whoops, sorry and about that. And they're available now, and this is the latest model. And what's your website? Uh, website is slingshot.com. Slingshot. How did you get that? That's pretty good. Uh, I like it. Dickie Bartolo, Man's Med is right here. And the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv, the car show 2018. Bye. Interesting. My biggest question is, uh, why? Um, why why well, would you want a cut-down car like that? I, I, I was surprised by the price. I, I, yeah. And also, when I was looking at the uh, website a little early today, I see that it says starting at... Right. Twenty nine nine ninety nine. So I'm not quite sure um, because yeah. it's basically a motorcycle, right? I mean, it's a motorcycle would probably be less expensive. <laughs> oh, um, no. I, I, yeah, I, I meant a I car. Meant it, it, <laughs> That's it, a car. It's, it's registered. It's yeah, I guess. What did he say? It's registered as a I forgot what he said. Oh, you don't need a motorcycle addition to it. It it now there's a new, some sort of a new uh, classification for three wheel vehicles because we've seen a few of them uh, yeah. in the past couple of years using it, it like for your second car just to do groceries and stuff. I don't know. I guess one of the main reasons is if you want to be a show off because yeah. you're certainly going to attract some. Uh, attention for sure for sure and and this is, looks like the whole range most expensive on the left least expensive on the right so the the smallest it looks like starts at 20k which yes. is is pretty inexpensive for a brand new vehicle i'm also wondering i mean i agree with you that probably the biggest reason you would get this is is to uh be you know the joneses you know you've caught up uh you're already there um and there, but there may be some other sort of things like uh, maybe you're in a location like this is like the weirdest, most specific case I could think of is that <laughs> I remember going on a cruise and they said every vehicle here has to be a super low emission vehicle because it's really difficult to get gasoline here. And so most people buy golf carts. Uh, to get oh, around. Oh, okay. And so okay. if you didn't want to buy a golf cart, you wanted to buy a better car, you could buy this. You know, like, that, but that's like the most specific, weird, out there right. uh, reason. And I, and I think it's just a normal 170 horsepower gas engine. Mm -hmm. uh, Polaris is big in snowmobiles mm -hmm. and they do a lot of uh, personal watercraft on the water. Right. So I guess this is their uh, deciding to. Uh, move from the lawn to the water. Now let's do something on the road. I don't know how long the whole line's been around, but I know this uh, new slingshot grand touring Ellie is just six weeks old. Yeah. Um, anyway. Cool, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. yes, it's, yes, if it's cool. <laughs> cool, I guess. It'll know? be cool to some people. Yeah, absolutely. I like, it, you know, and, and it's like, I. what's funny is I've actually seen these around. I've seen these in person. Um, oh, maybe not this okay. exact brand, but that trike setup where you have two yes. wheels in front, one wheel in back. Um, I've seen them at vacation spots where it seemed like they had rented them, not owned them. Um, I have seen them around uh, like my friends' neighborhoods or my family's neighborhoods where it looked like they were purchased and bought for a family uh, or, you know, a 
person in midlife crisis, that sort of thing. And, um, <laughs> Uh, and they, so there anyway. would be warm, warm uh, climate Absolutely. location. Yeah, oh, every it time I've like, seen it, it's yeah. been in Texas, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, exactly. or by a beach, uh, for sure. So, yeah. there, I, there's, it's not like this is a product that I can absolutely say with confidence, no, on the lab or buy this, because I've seen them around. I've seen people yeah. purchase them and use them. So, um, really cool that they have the new feature of the Touring, which has the canopy and uh, the, you know, the look price well, exactly and cool. you know uh, a, an all-screen dashboard and right. uh, a great sound system and the fact that there are like seven of them in the line means that they must be wild must be doing well for the company right that is a good question uh, they asked a uh, miles per gallon in the chat room spaceman you know i didn't even ask that yeah i would assume I, I better than a normal car um, I would think because the, he said that it can't weigh more than 1,750 pounds and it's a 170 horsepower engine. So what is that like? One horsepower for every 10 pounds? That's, right. That's going to be fast. Um, so it should be, it should be kind of, you know, I'm going to go. Oh, does it have? Fast. Uh, it does have some specs. I'm looking for the, uh, for the miles per gallon, um, it's going through transmission and all sorts of stuff. I don't want any of that. I just want miles per gallon. <laughs> um, That's probably uh, a bad sign. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it pops up. Uh, yeah. The fuel capacity is 9.77 uh, gallons. So oh, it, well, then, then it must be a, fairly economical. Yeah, because this is a small With, tank. Um, that is. And that's about all that I'm seeing there. If someone in the chat room could do a little bit more research to get back with us, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, Perfect. moving on. Okay, so uh, Dennis is going to take his guess in the video, but we can ask you and the chat room, Chad, what, what the heck is it? Da -da. Okay, so it's obviously something male themed because that looks like a almost like a postage uh, uh, thing. Uh, it almost looks like uh, a movie. No, it's, that's a full size right there. Yeah, it, it reminds me of some type of envelope, and that is. A, it licks envelopes for you. That's my guess. Oh, okay. It licks envelopes for you. Okay. All right. Well, let's find out as we watch our next video. Dick D. Bartolo, Maz, Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're doing another What the Heck Is It? So we're going to ask our producer cameraman, Dennis Wonderlin, What the Heck Is This? Uh, an airmail package. An oh, airmail same as you, package. Chad. Oh, my. Uh, okay. With something triangular in it. Is it an airplane that you unfold <laughs> and then fly? Well, I tell you what it is. On an airplane, mainly in coach, it's a way to divide the seat so that each one of you has an armrest. Here's a little video from the company. Join the movement to unfold savvier skies with Soragami, an elegant and innovative armrest extender inspired by origami, the Japanese art of paper folding. Ideal what? for frequent flyers, Soragami divides and extends both sides of the airplane armrest to expand elbow space for both travelers and create a full physical separation. It's a win-win. Lightweight and compact, stylish and streamlined, Soragami folds flat like a piece of paper into your carry-on. Simply spring it into shape and secure the winglets over nearly every airplane Armrest. So that's it. I think it's very clever. Here it is on Amazon. Soragami Airplane Portable Armrest Extender Divider. It's $29.50 in Amazon Prime. It, it's kind of new, so there's only 31 reviews so far. It got four out of five stars from those 31 people. It's made out of recyclable plastic, high-quality leatherette. It does solve the problem of fighting for the armrest, and it's fully adjustable. It works from armrests 1.5 inches to 2.75 inches, and it has these little adjustable screws here to uh, adjust the width of it. So you open it up, then these guys slide down over the armrest, and then you can tighten the screw on the armrest if you like. I think it's pretty neat. I like it. Dick D. Bartolo, Man's Medis writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Is that my flight leaving? 
Got to mail a package. That, yes. is, that I would have never uh, guessed that at all. I, I thought, I almost, I really actually thought that it was a letter opener. Um, oh, okay. Because I've actually seen and used those that has a little, little blade inside and a motor to push the letter through to open up letters so you don't have to do anything. Um, oh, oh. And I didn't want to like guess correctly because that's just never fun. <laughs> but I would have never guessed that never this guessed was an that. armrest extender. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So okay. it's kind of clever. And then the company says, you know, just ask if it's a total stranger next to you. Just say, is it okay to use this? And I think if you opened it up and showed them what it was, I would think anybody would say yes. Yeah. Because it, it makes the armrest a little uh, wider and a touch longer. And your arms won't touch each other. And so, and the little leatherette covering uh, is Velcroed on so you can take it home and then you can wash the side that wasn't your arm <laughs> if you didn't trust them. <laughs> uh, yeah, effect. I think it's clever. Yeah. yeah. I think it's um, yeah. The hardest part of this for me would be working up the courage to talk to the person next to me. Online. Next to you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah. that, that's strange because you are so outgoing. <laughs> I would think that you would. I play outgoing on camera. Oh, uh, I see. Really well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. No. Well, you know, it's funny because we did the spare tray, the tray that you put in the window. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and on the trip out, I was sitting on the aisle and I didn't want to ask my seatmate because he looked like he was a businessman who had a hundred papers and wasn't going to be thrilled. But on the way back, the guy seemed very, uh, you know, outgoing. And I just said, you know, I have a little gadget here. Can we try it in your window? And he put it in. He goes, oh, that's a very clever idea. So depending on who's sitting next to you, I, I think I would venture to say, uh, you know, I test gadgets. Can I? Try this and see if you like it. Yeah. So you know, yeah. it's funny because this is a universal issue. You would have thought by now that something as simple as an extending armrest would not <laughs> that the add air, that the airline themselves the airline could do. Yes. Like, look, it just doesn't. I could see adding two armrests that would be too big, too much weight, cost fuel, but something like this that just adds a divider. And an extra area for your arm would be lovely. Why don't uh, this? Yeah. Pff, come on. Yes. Uh, until then, until the future where this exists, <laughs> you can get Soragami, the airplane uh, portable armrest extender. You can. So cool. Twenty nine fifty on Amazon. Twenty nine fifty. Now the next one is another airline gadget, and you can tell me after you see it. I might have trouble using this, but you'll judge for yourself. Here okay. you go. Dick Bartolo, Man's Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. So a lot of people are afraid of germs, okay? And what better place to find germs than public places like theaters, airline seats? Okay. So I was looking online about how often do airliners clean their seats? And one post said... As a, as a rule of thumb, there's a complete wipe down every 100 hours of flight or 30 days, whichever comes first. Okay, That's like, what, 20 transcontinental trips before they wipe the seats down? So there is a solution to that if you are a germaphobe. This is what it looks like. Ta-da! Seat sitters. Clean, healthy, and fun. So it is a disposable, reusable, you certainly don't want to buy it and then throw it away after one flight. Uh, so it opens up and then it's elasticized in the back. So it goes over the back of your seat. It's, I think, 54 inches long. That's plenty long. And it's 24 inches wide. Okay. And I looked on Seat Guru and almost every coach and business class seat does not exceed 24 inches. So this will fit 90% of uh, airline seats uh, shown on Seat uh, Guru. And if you're in first class, I don't think you want to use this. They, I think in first class, they do it every 90 hours. So this is what you get. You get the seat cover, also good for theaters, trains. 
You get the mask. Da -da -da -da. Good, all right. You get a little table cover for the snack table. And the only thing uh, uh, about this, the uh, seat sitter's tray cover is that there's nothing to sort of hold it on. And they make two versions, the normal version, and then they make something called da -da, Kids Edition. Okay. So I bought them both. Uh, the Kids Edition has crayons in it. So you get crayons, you get a couple of wet ones, so you can sterilize the armrest. Or well, you could use that armrest that uh, you saw on the Gizwiz also. Uh, and it also comes with a No Nuts sticker, if you want to put that on your little tablecloth. And you, you can actually draw on this. So now they're $14.95 on Amazon. But if you go to Seat City's website itself, you can shop. The wedding edition, ta -da! bachelorette, bride. Notice, notice there's no groom. Bachelorette, bride, or king. Okay, that's not going to go over big. And I believe those are $19.95. You can get Mr., Mrs. I, I mean, uh, who's going to do this? I mean, it's embarrassing enough that you <laughs> discover your seat, which... I probably wouldn't have the nerve to do, but I, I can see some of the faded germs would have no problem using these. But I don't think you want Mr. and Mrs. and Queen. That They're $20. If you want them customized, check the website. I believe for $30, you can have anything embroidered on it. Uh, actually, I think it's a, a pretty good idea. Seat sitters. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads, Madis Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv in the spanking clean Disneyland studio. Bye. Now, do you think that the, the main reason people would get this is because they're very territorial about their seat or because they are very hygienic and, and, and germ focused? Uh, germ focused mainly because, uh, as I mentioned in the piece, that what I found online was that a rule of thumb for airliners is, is there's a complete wipe down after every 100 hours of flight. Hmm. So that's like 20 transcontinental flights <laughs> before the yeah. seats are totally washed down. So this is an easy way to know that the seat's protected. Right. And, you know, you can use, use it on planes, trains, and in the movies. Yeah, I don't think and if uh, you could, the if movies you... ever get wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't exactly. think that ever happens. Yeah. No, <clears throat> no. And if you have people who have unclean houses, you could bring it over and just say, is it okay if I hang this over your chair before we <laughs> right. have dinner? At my house, the uh, seats never get wiped down either. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, if I, I come, realize. I'll bring my seat sitter. Okay. <laughs> and it would obviously say king. Uh, for, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Okay, Perfect. seat sitters, uh, good price, and seatsitter.com. Okay, Perfect. with that, uh, it is time for a new month of Chad's Crappy Corner. Uh, before we jump into uh, the theme, I guess let's talk about what uh, the theme song, uh, let's talk about what the theme for the month is going to be. And we asked the patrons, of course, and the options were between fashion, home security, mm, okay, and elderly. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna guess fashion was last. Last, okay, okay. I'm gonna say home security was first. Okay, let's see the results. And elderly was in the middle. Belts are loading in and now. Okay. To final tabulations. The <laughs> the last of the of the monkeys are reading these results. And if they don't load, I okay, there we go. Home security, then elderly, then fashion, you are correct. So yeah. Okay, we know the chat room. Yeah, we, we do. Know. We do. So home Bacon security. said, why didn't you do elderly fashion? <laughs> You know what? Now we have next month's theme. <laughs> you know, we don't even have to ask the patrons because we know they'll That's choose right. that. So with That's that, right. let's jump into. You know you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it? Okay, so uh, with home security on the mind, I went and uh, got some home security gadgets, and this is actually a gadget. 
uh, that I can confirm is crappy, mostly because it's do-it-yourself. This is a very do-it-yourself gadget, and uh, it does require a Raspberry Pi and a webcam for you to have. Oh my God! Oh, um, you have to have them. I was gonna... oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah for for you. Um, and then so anyway, I recorded a video earlier explaining it all, and I've actually been using this at my own house for a few months. So. Did you just throw away all my Kleenex cat? Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, so let's uh, take a look at the video. Hey Diggy D, Chad here, and we are checking out Kerber OS on the Raspberry Pi. What this allows you to do is take any Raspberry Pi and a webcam and turn it into a home surveillance system. And it all starts with Kerber OS and you first download the installer. And what you're doing is you're flashing the OS onto a mini micro SD card. So we're taking this SD card and then we're going to put it into the Raspberry Pi after this. And this installation is very, very simple. All you have to do is select what type of release that you want. The board, the Raspberry Pi that you're doing, we're doing it on a three. Choosing next, choosing your network type and then typing in your passphrase, and you can select your network configuration. Once we select the drive, then we are ready to flash. This will erase anything that is on the SD card and completely flash it for the OS. It doesn't take too long. This is a drive that I've already previously done. You just throw it into the back of the Raspberry Pi where the SD card slot is, and this is just a little enclosure that I bought for the Raspberry Pi, uh, just to kind of make it look nice. And then you throw really any webcam. I have tried this with Logitech and Microsoft. The Logitech one's aspect ratio looked a little bit better. Once you have everything hooked up, uh, all you have to do is navigate to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on your local network. And this is what you are given. This one is set up in the cat's eating area so I can monitor if they're using the litter box, if they're eating food, or if the food is running low away from home. This activity view is really, really useful, especially if you're watching something that like doesn't get a lot of activity, like say your front door or something like that. Right here you have a timeline of the previous days, so I can click into the 4th of April here and it will show me the kind of a heat map up here of the times that things happened and a preview of what is going on down below. And you can load a whole bunch more of these and they kind of autoplay as little video segments. So you can see Waffles was coming in here to get food earlier. Jack Jack was uh, walking around doing some stuff um, and it just kind of just shows you all of those events. Now, if you knew that there was a specific time that something happened or you see something on the heat map, you can drag to that event and it will show you exactly what that is. So if you knew that a package was delivered around a certain time, you can dig in to see that specific event. You can also click on it to get kind of a larger view. And if there's multiple events, ooh, that's not loading all that great. Uh, but if there's multiple events in the same time, they'll show up down here so that you could click through. Let me find one of those. Here we go, this one has six events. So you can click on the preview and it will show you each of those. This is a little robot uh, running and, and moving. And then we could go to the next event and see what that is. So you can easily dig in and see exactly what each video file is. Some of the nice things is that it has really good settings to uh, change between the USB camera, the Raspberry Pi camera, or an IP camera. It shows you a heat map of where most action um, happens and you can even set it so that its motion detection is activated only by a specific area by choosing that with kind of like a drag and drop sort of feature. On top of that, this will work with most IP camera viewers. So if you just need a clean video source, this isn't all just sort of maintained inside of this operating system on the web. You can use any IP viewer really to, uh, to look at it. So if you're someone who has a Raspberry Pi laying around that isn't being used much and you wanna set up your own home surveillance system with just a webcam, you can easily use all of these features to create your own home surveillance network. 
and all of those files are saved right on the device. So as long as this isn't accessible, those files can't be accessible either. So um, I've been running this for a while now for, for uh, and I have actually now like four different uh, Raspberry Pis. It's pretty simple to use just your like uh, Wi-Fi um, settings to see which IP address each Raspberry Pi is on. And then you can even kind of assign those IP addresses so that if you want to bookmark. So them. it's one camera per Raspberry Pi? Yeah, one camera per Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pis are now like $35, something like that. Um, actually, I completely forget. Um, and these I literally just had uh, lying around. So to me, it was basically free because uh, I didn't have to, you know, buy a new one. Yeah, thirty-five dollars looks like for the Raspberry Pi three. Um, and I feel like the interface is just absolutely amazing. Um, and you can use in, there's tons if you if you're not familiar with the like IP camera space. There's so many different IP camera viewers that are like software that you could load on any computer or you can even buy like boxes that will do it for you. Um, and so then you can see everything pretty easily. It could be wireless, it can be wired because there's a ethernet uh, cable on here. Um, and I just use like a basic USB and uh, you know wall, wall brick to power mine and it does it all wirelessly. Um, I find it really, really useful and really, really intuitive and pretty simple just to dig in to really anything and then be able to see, you know, what's actually going on. I kind of wanted to show it off in real time because I edited out a lot of the loading. It is a little bit slow because it is using your own um, network and there's this like little heat map up here so you can see stuff, but you can already see that some of the videos are loading in and showing what's going on. So this would be awesome if you already had some Raspberry Pis, some webcams, and just wanted something extra to have an eye on, say, your front porch or garage. It's pretty simple to do. And what does this cost? Oh, uh, it's free. <laughs> oh, it's free? <laughs> yes, other than the uh, Raspberry Pi and your own webcam, the operating system is free and open source. And so you oh. can download it and just use it. They do offer a cloud system as an added on price. So if you want, if you can't say team viewer in or can't get to your own local network because all of this is done on, on your local IP addresses and stuff like that, um, then you can buy their cloud system and they will upload late, the latest activity. So whenever it grabs a video file, it will send it up into the cloud so that you can uh, look at it. Um, and that does that really that doesn't do live video like this does. So, you know this. Oh, I when see. You okay. Look okay. at the dashboard. You're looking at exactly that moment live video. Um, but it, when you use their uh, cloud feature, you look at video clips that have been already taken and then uploaded to the cloud. Um, okay. So yeah. Is and it's there, iOS, and is that on a Windows machine? Right. So this can be because the the installer is uh, is OS ten, Windows, and Linux. So that's how you get the oh. the stuff onto the the SD card. And then after that, it's anything. It can be absolutely anything because you're using just a web browser to load it up. So you could do it from your phone. You could do it from a computer. You could do it from uh, a spaceship. You know, whatever you have. Um, so yeah. Is the now, spaceship included? <laughs> no, spaceship's not included. Uh, there's a question, Bleak's asking, could I theoretically put in two cameras? And there is documentation to do that. It's just not v that great. Basically, you're creating two, uh, two different areas for it to connect and it doesn't work, it doesn't work out of the box wonderfully. There are uh, Wikipedia articles on how to pull that off if you want to plug in two cameras. Um, but from my experience, it doesn't work like that right out of the box. So, yeah. Okay. And what's their website? Uh, okay. So it is Kerberos. So K E R B E R O S dot I O to download all of the, uh, all of this stuff. And then I believe that their cloud thing is Kerberos dot cloud is where you can buy that sort of stuff. But Kerber OS is a dot IO is where you can find all of the information in order to, oh, uh, wow. to, to get it done. And a freebie. It's a freebie. So it's a, a little freebie. crappy because you got to put it together yourself. You know, a normal uh, 
camera doesn't quite look like this when uh, when you get it from uh, the, the box store. Uh, so it's a little bit crappy when it comes to that. But once you get past that, uh, I feel like it's really fully featured. Uh, you can, you know, like I said in the video, you can set locations for the motion tracking and stuff like that. And uh, all of all of it was really, really simple. Like once you have it installed once, you can kind of do over the air updates. You don't have to pull the SD card out and bring it to your computer to update the system. It can just uh, update it from itself, which is pretty cool. So yeah. Cerberus. Excellent. Oh, oh my gosh. Someone's saying it's like Cerberus, the, the guard dog of Hades. I didn't even think, did not even think of that. Uh, but yeah, that's true. It's, it's Cerber OS, Cerberus, like the... Uh, Haiti guard dog. Okay, uh, with that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Foghorn. Oh, and our letter is from David. I'm just going to spell his last name. M-A-L-I-N-O-V-S-K-Y. Malvininsky. As close as I can get. Uh, <laughs> Dick and Chad, after many years of procrastinating, I have finally sent in a video. There are several nylon or vinyl cases that I have bought for some of my gadgets, usually under the name Hermichel or Caseling on Amazon. I just search on Amazon for, put in gadget name, and then case, and I often find something. Uh, thank you, David. And I have done this too. I have bought tons of cases for my gadgets on Amazon. So let's see David's video. Hey, Dick and Chad. I want to point out some uh, gadgets for my gadgets that I've picked up from Amazon. Uh, these are hard shell cases for various uh, items I've had. They are usually on Amazon under the names Caseling or Hermit Shell. Here's one for a uh, radio Walkman that I have. Uh, here's one for a portable radio. Um, and then here's one for a cordless screwdriver. It fits the charger and a small set of drill bits. And uh, here's one for my um, electric shaver. And if I close them, well, I can close them. I won't be able to, uh... Ooh, sorry. That's one, and then we have the, that one, and then that one, and then that one. I've also seen them on Amazon for uh, Bluetooth speakers, um, what do you say, uh, safety equipment for uh, home use, um, and a number of other things. Uh, they're made by Caseling or Hermit Shell. That's all, bye. That's pretty cool. Uh, I've never even thought to do that. It's a good tip of just. Uh, it is. Uh, I've bought several cases there. Uh, I think mine actually just say Amazon on them or uh, Amazon Choice on some of them. But they're very reasonable and uh, they they hold a, a ton of stuff. I, I once did an article for a computer magazine. I bought a used laptop computer, the Radio Shack. I think it was the one hundred. You're, yeah, there you go. And I spent more money on cases for it <laughs> than I, because I had the case that if I was just carrying this alone, then I had the case if I was carrying it and the uh, disk drive, and then I had the case if I was going to go overnight with it. Uh, but never the choice of cases that we have now. So this is really great. Yeah. The, uh, just like looking through this, I mean, it's just like, isn't it great? For this isn't it... specific thermometer, you know, like if you, if yes. you want to fit yes. the TP20, TP8, TP7 wireless remote digital cooking food and meat thermometer, this is perfect. Yeah. And if you went to the company for the custom case, it'd be forty nine dollars. Look, yeah. look at that. That's a beautiful case for eighteen bucks, for sure. with the two compartments for the two gadgets. Uh, uh, David, it's a great. It's a great it's a, tip. It's a great tip. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I can't tell you how many little things that I, ju I didn't even, I just gave up at the thought of buying a case. You know, you have it and you, you kind of go, oh yeah, I kind of need a case for this, but one that's specifically made for this is going to cost, you know, $50. So no, I'm yeah. just going to pass. Um, that's a great idea. Just yeah. search the item and a case on Amazon. And, and you know, he's found that a lot, of, a lot are made by Caseling and, and that's great. That's fantastic. Perfect. So David, send me your mailing address. Assuming you live in the United States, you'll get an Alfred E. Newman picture now, probably 37 years old. You'll get the current issue of Mad Magazine. And I think we have one more video in the house. So we need more videos, uh, two to three minutes, anything to do with the gadget, like that thing that David sent in. That was uh, a great thing that uh, I have a lot of those cases, but I never thought about actually doing a video and so that people knew that you can get those uh, things on Amazon. So make a video two to th uh, three minutes landscape mode. Just make sure we can hear you. Okay. And see the product, uh, put it on YouTube. You can click on listed if you only want certain people to be able to see the video and send us that link to mail at gizwiz.tv. And if we use it, and uh, we're using like 99% of them, uh, you'll get the mad and the picture. If you live outside the U.S., uh, I will sign, actually sign one of those rare photos and uh, scan it and email it to you, okay? And when you come to the United States, it's sitting in a file in my corner. You can have the original. Uh, so get it, get uh, filming and sending mail at the gizwiz.tv with that let's move on to the letter now and uh, Kevin writes us a very short email he says hi guys I think you'll find this an interesting gadget and I took a quick look at it. It is interesting, but we need Chad to tell us how interesting it it is. Yeah. It's from Elgato, and you did something from them a while back. Yeah, so Elgato is a company that I really like. They make a lot of peripherals for gamers and live streamers. So they're, they're really, really, really known for capture, HDMI capture cards, and that sort of thing. And so this is the Stream Deck. And just by looking at it, you can imagine what the thought of our letter writer and us would be, is that this is exactly a monocaster. This is like the monocaster that we've always needed. Um, and I've never, I've seen these before, and I really would love to test one out. Um, and the idea is that there's all these little buttons, and behind each button is actually a screen and you can edit and customize all of those buttons to be anything you want. It could be to switch between scenes in OBS or XSplit. It could be to play a sound, play a video clip, uh, do some sort of animation. All of that can be done within the uh, Stream Deck. And it looks to have some pretty powerful uh, hooks into all of the streaming applications that we use and wow. we actually use here uh, on, and on Gizwiz we use OBS to switch everything so this should work perfectly uh, plug and play with what we do here I would definitely I'm not I have I have a contact there I should probably email them see if I can get one. I think you should what's it cost um let me oh gosh I can't remember I do believe that it's in the like sixty to a hundred dollar range, if I was to remember. Okay. Oh, one hundred and forty dollars. One hundred and forty dollars. Okay. So it's it's a pretty expensive little piece of equipment. But I mean, you can kind of see why because with I mean, oh each, yeah, each button it's... is a screen. Um, wow, I think it's great. Yeah, this is. I mean, and I it, like the little, the little stand. You can uh, have it standing at pretty much any angle. Yeah, for sure. And I've, se I've seen these before, and I, so I know, you know, I mean, just, I guess, look at the reviews on Amazon, four and a half stars. Uh, lots of people do like them. They do, you know, my biggest fear with something like this is that the compatibility wouldn't work that great. It would, you know, maybe the software would be lacking or something like that. Um, 
but just based off of the reviews, that that isn't true. You can use it when streaming and you know switch all that stuff, and then even when you're not streaming, you could have it to be hot buttons for your other type of work. Maybe uh, you know if you want to launch some songs or, or stuff like that. I was kind of seeing over here with like this image, uh, play pause for your own music so that you don't. Oh yeah, I see. Know, I see. It's not just only when streaming. Um, so you, so Chad, you would load in a program and the program, how, how do you get what's on each key to be on each key? What I would assume is that you have, you have the program from stream deck themselves and that okay. would have a whole bunch of different options that would oh, have okay. options to pro possibly options that work directly with OBS and XSplit to do some of the stream switching. But then also you'd have like a play pause button. You know, and so you could select a key oh. and say, I want this to be the, what is like maybe on a multimedia keyboard, uh, the play pause button on that multimedia keyboard and make the image to be a play pause button. And the next wow. key over, select that, say this will be the next button and then, you know, do that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, this is very, very powerful. Um, and well, let's hope the folks cool. at Elgato what could fun. provide a product sample. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, the Elgato will, Stream yeah. Deck. Go ahead. Nice, Kevin. Thank you for that. That's yeah. excellent. And Elgato.com slash gaming, I think, is the place to go, or just search Elgato Gaming. So yeah, thanks, Kevin. With that, I want to give another big thank you to our patrons over at Patreon.com. Big, big thank you to you guys for helping support the show. Uh, if you don't know, we have a Patreon where people can support the show every episode. Give just a little bit every time we publish an episode. That's over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. And those guys are absolutely amazing. Our hearts go out to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting the show. Currently, we have 243 patrons. You guys are awesome. Uh, and if you want to support the show, if you enjoy the show and want to give back just a little bit, any amount, doesn't have to be some, some you know, it doesn't have to be a, a sandwich even. It could just be the lettuce on the sandwich. Uh, that's the price, you know, that we're talking about. Uh, that would be awesome. And you can find us at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Some people uh, would prefer not to give uh, reoccurring and want to do it just a single donation. Gizwiz.tv. There is a Patreon tab at the top. Click that and you'll find a PayPal link for us just to get it once. Thank you guys so much for everybody. No, uh, it's gives great. Back, gives back to the show. We are we are In rolling. May, we start year four. Thanks <sighs> to the Patreons. That's awesome. Unbelievable. Absolutely awesome. Uh, if you enjoy this show, please consider subscribing or following when we are live at gizwiz.tv. That's all of our previous episodes are uploaded there. And even our live stream when we record live, even with ma massive edits to the show, <laughs> the chat room gets to see it all. Uh, so that's every uh, Thursday at 430 or 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern time. So uh, hey, head on over to the website to gizwiz.tv to check that out. Head on over to our sister site, gizwiz.biz, to play What the Heck Is It? The game show where we don't know what the heck it is. Uh, we, Dickie D puts up a gadget, a whole gadget, and you have to look at that and guess it. We had a nice... Uh, Nice sort of spinoff on today's episode, and I exactly. guessed wrong in all counts. <laughs> this is it. Uh, looks to me like a. Uh, this is a um, way to make your uh, bottles of wine uh, more dashing with a, a little bit of a, a bone curly cue on the neck of Whoa. a bottle of wine. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, it's like a tie or a bow tie or a, a normal neck tie. But for you know what? That's another million wine. dollar idea right there. There you go. There you go. The, so the Gizwiz, <laughs> the Gizwiz uh, classy, neck, classy wine neck holder. Neck to fold. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and if you guess correctly, there's six mad magazines for correct answers. But if you guess cleverly, funny, interesting, uh, and creative, then there are 12 mad magazines. This is the mad magazine issue number one from LA, California, uh, for those who get creative with it. So uh, get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. 
Perfect. That about wraps it up for our show. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week on The Gizwiz. And I'll be here. <laughs>